the pre oh good you're ho holding them there that's yeah. good
ਨਾ ਤੇ ਤਾਈ ਇਹ ਪਰੀ ਰਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਕਿਤੇ ਮਾਈ ਕਿਤੇ ਕਿਤੇ ਅਚ ਤੇ ਤਾਈ ਇਹ ਪਰੀ ਕਿ ਹੈ ਪਰੀ ਅਨ ਕਿਤੇ ਹੋ ਨਾ ਹੋ ਤੇ ਤੰਗਾ ਤੋ ਹੋਕਿੰਗ ਆ ਕੋਲੇ ਕਿ ਮੂਰੀ ਚੀ ਹੈ ਮਾਉਰੀ ਓਲਾ ਇਹ ਮੀ ਹੀ ਅਚੂ ਆਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਅਚੂ ਆ ਤੇ ਹੀ ਤੇ ਵਹੀ ਤੇ ਤਪ ਤੇ ਮਾਤਾ ਪੁ ਨਾ ਹੋਗਾ ਮੈਂ ਤਪ ਕਾ ਤੋ ਆ ਤੇ ਕਾਈ ਫਕਾ ਮਾ ਕੂ ਕੂ ਯਾ ਤਾ ਤੋ ਤੇ ਕਾਈ ਫਕਾ ਮਾ ਕੂ ਕੂ ਇੰ ਆ ਪੁਰੋ ਪੁਰੋ ਰੂਈ ਹੋ ਮਾ ਇਹ ਉਹ ਤਾ ਤੋ ਚੂਪ ਨੋ ਇਹ ਉਹ ਤਾ ਤੋ ਮਾ ਚੂ ਆ ਕਿਆ ਤਪ ਆਉ ਆ ਪੁਰਾ ਪੁਰਾ ਕਿਆ ਪੁਆ ਵਾਈ ਕਿਆ ਫਾਈ ਹੋਆ ਕਿਆ ਪਾਤੋ ਨਾ ਕਾ ਕਰ ਕਿ ਨੂ ਕਿ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਕਿ ਤੇ ਨੋ ਤਾ ਤੀ ਤਰਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਨੋ ਰੇਰਾ ਕਾ ਹੈ ਦੇ ਗਾ ਮੀ ਹੀ ਕਿਤੇ ਕਿਤੇ ਖਾਈ ਚਾ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਗਾ ਵਾਈ ਰੋ ਰਾਤ ਉਹ ਮਾ ਕੋਰੀ ਰੋ ਕਿਤੇ ਪੋ ਕੋ ਰਾਤ ਉਹ ਫਾਈ ਖਾਈ ਗਾ ਨਾ ਕਿ ਤੇ ਰਾ ਖਾਈ ਗਾ ਵਾ ਚੀ ਚਾ ਹੈ ਖਾਈ ਗਾ ਤੂ ਤੂ ਮੋ ਤਾ ਤੂ ਮੋ ਤੇ ਤੰਗਾ ਤਾ ਮੇ ਪੇ ਨੇ ਆਖੇ ਤੇ ਕੋ ਰੇ ਰੋ ਹਾਈ ਰੇ ਕੋ ਤਾ ਹਾਈ ਰੇ ਕੋ ਤਾ ਹਾਈ ਰੇ ਕੋ ਤਾ ਤੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਰੰਗੀ ਕੋ ਫਾ ਪਾਤੇਲੇ ਮੁਲੀ ਆਉ ਸਟਾਵਰਸ ਇਨ ਆ ਵਿਕੀ ਕੋ ਪਹੁਰਾ ਕੇ ਨੇ ਕੋ ਪਾ ਪੇਟਰ ਮਿਖਾਇਲ ਰਾਇਨ ਕੋ ਸਿਸਟਰ ਲੂਈਸ ਓਕੇਨ ਕੋ ਐਂਜਲ ਮਕਿਨਿਸਟਰੀ ਨਾ ਆਪੋ ਪੋ ਕੋ ਵਾਈ ਕਾ ਮੋਹਿਓ ਨੋ ਰੇ ਦਾ ਹਾਈ ਰੇ ਆਚੂਰਾ ਹਾਈ ਰੇ ਆਚੂਰਾ ਹਾਈ ਰੇ ਆਚੂਰਾ ਨਾਈ ਤੇ ਤਾਉ ਕੋ ਤਾਹੀ ਮਨੋ ਏ ਵਰੂ ਰਾਉ ਏ ਤੋਰ ਤੇ ਕਾ ਮਾ ਵਰੂ ਯੂਰ ਮਾਇ ਆ ਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਪਮ ਪਾਰੇ ਯੂਰ ਗਈ ਤੋਂ ਨਾ ਵਕਾ ਖਾਈ ਪੂ ਕੇ ਤਰਾਈ ਆ ਤੇ ਆ ਕਿਤੇ ਵਹਾ ਪੂ ਉਹ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਆਂਗਾ ਏ ਆਈ ਕਿੰਗ ਆ ਕੋਰ ਰੰਗ ਆ ਤੂ ਪੂ ਨਾ ਇ ਤੋਂ ਨਾ ਚੂ ਨਾ ਤਨੀ ਫਾਇ ਰੂ ਕਿ ਤੇ ਚੈਕ ਹੀ ਆਇ ਕਿ ਕੋਰੀ ਏ ਫਰਾ ਕਤਾ ਹੀ ਕਾਉ ਤੋਂ ਨਾ ਵਕਾ ਕਿ ਤੇ ਫਰੇ ਉਹ ਮੇਰੇ ਰਾਵ ਕੋ ਤਾਂ ਮਤੀ ਪੁਆਇੰਟਨ ਇ ਤੇ ਤੋ ਤਰਾ ਕਿ ਰੇ ਰੇ ਕਾ ਵਾ ਨਾ ਤੇ ਮਿਹ ਤੂ ਤਾਂ ਹੀ ਕਿਆ ਤੇ ਰੋ ਨੋ ਰੇ ਰਾ ਹਰੀ ਕੋ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਆਂਗਾ ਕੋ ਕੋ ਰਾ ਤੇ ਚੋ ਤਾ ਹੀ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਵਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਨਾ ਕੋ ਮਰ ਮੋਤੇ ਹਾ ਹੀ ਕਤੁਰੀ ਕਤਪ ਨੋ ਰੇ ਰਾ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਆਂਗਾ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਕੋ ਤਾ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਕੋ ਤੇ ਵੇ ਪੂਰੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਤੇ ਤਪੂ ਮੇ ਤੇ ਮਨੋ ਪੀ ਹੋ ਪੋਂ ਪਾਰੀਆ ਨੋ ਰੇ ਰਾ ਇਹ ਰਾ ਰੰਗ ਚਿਰਾ ਮਾ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਕੋ ਤਾ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਕੋ ਤਾ ਆ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਕੋ ਤਾ ਨਾ ਕੋ ਪੀ ਹੋ ਪੋਂ ਪਾਰੀਆ ਤੇ ਚੋ ਤਾ ਹੀ ਫਾਇ ਮੂਰੀ ਆਇਆ ਕੋਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਆ ਕਰੋਕ ਕੋਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਆ ਸਟਾਈਨਸ ਕੋਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਆ ਲਕ ਕੋਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਆ ਕਲੀਰੀ ਕੋਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਆ ਲੈਨਹੈਨ ਆਰ ਹਾ ਮਾਈ ਆ ਫਾਇ ਮੂਰੀ ਆਇਆ ਕੋਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਆ ਕਲੀਰੀ ਨਾ ਫਾਇ ਮੂਰੀ ਕੋ ਆ ਚੀ ਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਆ ਲਿਸਟਨ ਨਾ ਕੋਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਆ ਦਲਾਗੀ ਕੋਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਆ ਮੈਕੀ ਨਾ ਕੋਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਆ ਚੇਨ ਹੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਉਨ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਕੋਈ ਤੇ ਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਆ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਕੋਈ ਹੋਕੀ ਫਾਇ ਮੂਰੀ ਆਇਆ ਕੋ ਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਪਤਰੀ ਕੀ ਆ ਟਾਈਮ ਆਈ ਨੇ ਕਿਆ ਕੋ ਹੈ ਇਤ ਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਐ ਚੀ ਪੈ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਕੋ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਕੋ ਹੈ ਇਫ ਆਈ ਨੇ ਇਨ ਆ ਤਪ ਵਾਈ ਆ ਪੋ ਪਰੀ ਮੈਂ ਰਾਤ ਉਹ ਨਾ ਪੀ ਹੋਪ ਕੋ ਕੋ ਹੈ ਰਾਤ ਚੋ ਨਾ ਹੁਰ ਮਾਰੂ ਆ ਉਹ ਰੇ ਤੇ ਨੇ ਆ ਕੇ ਤੇ ਮਹੀ ਕਿਆ ਕੋ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਹਲਾ ਤੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਮਹੀ ਪੋਹਰੀ ਕਿਆ ਕੋ ਹੈ ਨੋ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਨੋ ਤੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਫੜੇ ਕੋ ਤੇ ਮਹੀ ਮਾ ਕੋਈ ਤੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਰਾ ਤੇ ਮਹੀ ਹਾ ਚ ਕਿਆ ਕੋ ਹੈ ਮੈਂ ਤੇ ਰੋਪੂ ਨਹੀਂ ਹਰ ਮਈ ਤੋ ਤਹਾ ਰੇ ਰਾ ਤੇ ਮਚੋਰੀ ਕੋ ਨੇ ਬੇਨ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਕੋ ਤੇ ਫਨੰਗਾ ਥਾਈਦਾ ਵਚ ਕਿਆ ਕੋ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਪ੍ਰੀ ਹੀ ਉਹ ਤੇ ਰੋ ਹੈਪੀ ਹੋਪਾ ਉਹ ਕਿਰੀ ਕਿਰੀ ਰੋ ਮੈਂ ਤੇ ਥ
especially the towns of Greymouth and Hokitika, are thinking of you today. And you are always in our prayers. You have been a good and faithful servant. And they quote from Matthew's Gospel. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Such a fitting parable that you live every day as you continue to achieve wonderful things. We are so very proud of you. From when you were the young kid from Hokitika and now Bishop Steve Lowe of Auckland. We know you will never forget your heritage and we look forward to your next visit. And from Father Joaquin from Hokitika, Dear Bishop Steve, it is my joy to greet you today as you prepare for your installation as Bishop of Auckland. I thank God for your generous heart in saying your fiat to his invitation to be a priest of his church and then to be bishop. The greater the responsibility, the greater the trust. May the Holy Spirit continue to guide and inspire you in your new role. My prayers for you. From Father Joaquin. Noreira, katika kamihi, kia lato ma, kia lato e kore e tayatina na mai. Noreira, ano te reka, ano te mahara, ano te aroha, o te iwi mo, e te pihopa, noreira te na koe. Taira watu ki a koutou e ngā pihopa, e noho mai rā i te ahurewa tapu o ngā pōtoro, tēne ake te mihi ki a koutou, e tū kaha nei ki te tau toko i tēne i tō tātou pihopa hou, noreira tēne ake te mihi ki a koutou, taira watu ki a koutou ngā matua prihi, ngā rikona, ngā prata, ngā whaia tapu, ngā katakita, ngā kaiarehi, me te hunga whakapono katoa o te rohe nei, mai pare hauraki ki pare waikato, ki tāma ki herenga waka, ki te raki pai whenua tai atu ki te tai toke rau, me ki te rohe pihopa nei, o tāma ki makaurau, nō rei rā, tēnei ake te mihi ki a koutou, tēnā tātou e kake nei runga i tēnei to tātou waka, te waka o te hakapono, kia hoia ki uta, kia hoia ki tai, kia hoia ki ngā tō pituka tō o te motu, nō rei rā, i runga e noi we raha kāro, tēnā tātou, Tēnā tātou, a kia ora ko huhui mai nō tātou katoa. Mō Maria
tātou ki a tātou hurino to tātou whare, tēnā tātou, tēnā tātou, a tēnā tātou katoa. Ko ia nō te aroho te atua ki te ao. Ho mai ana e i e tanata mai ti ko tahi. Ka kore ai te tanata e ngaro ana. E whakapono ana ki aia. Ke whiwhi ai ki te oranga tonu tanga. Amen. Tēne rata mihi atu ki a koe te ranga tira te whanaunga e manuera. Mō tō whakatau ki a mātou i tēnei, i tēnei ata. A hākō ka mākū ki waho nei. Nā, e puta mai ngā pau mātou ki rungi a tātou i tēnei rā. Dō reira te hoki a ngā whakapau krakia ki a koe te whanaunga, Bob, o henare, tēnei rā te mihi atu ki a koe rua. Kua tau mai nei ki roto i tēnei whare krakia. Tēnei rā te mihi atu ki ngā pihopa. E haere mai ki te tautoko te kaupapa te rāne. A pihopa te mihi nare. Nō reira tēne rā te mihi atu kia. Kia kōrua. Ki tō tātou nei, Nancy au. Ko tai mai nei, te kārere o te pāpā wiruhiko. Nō reira tēne rā te mihi atu kia koe. E te Nancy au. Nō reira tēne rā. Nō reira tēnā koe. Tēnei rā te mihi atu kia koutou. Ka koutou ngā iwi. Tēnei tau koutou parahi. Tēnei tau koutou whare krakia. E haere mai koutou ia rā tapu, ia rā tapu ki te whakamana o tō tātou nei pihopā a tīpene. Nō reira tēnei rā te mihi atu kia koutou. Ko koutou rā te mana o tēnei whare krakia. Te whare krakia matu o te hāhi katorika i tāmaki makaura. Nō reira ka mihi atu kia koutou rā. Tēnei rā te mihi atu kia kourua ngā kai kranga. Mō tau koutou kranga kia mātou i tēnei, i tēnei ata. Nō reira ka mihi atu kia kourua. Kore o e tūne ki te tōro ngā kororo. E kororo a hau e nanahi. Nā ko pau ngā kororo roto i a hau nei. Ko kiti au tuku ingoa ki runga te pānui, a nā. Au te tahi ngā kai kōro. Nau reira, tēnei rā te mihi atu kia koutou. Nau reira, a kānui ngā mihi, e mihi a nei, e nanahi, e mihi nei, i tēnei ata. Nau reira, hurino ki a tātou whare, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, a tēnā tātou kato. E tū tātou. just said, a member of uh, Pope Francis saying that if the shepherd doesn't go in with the sheep and come out smelling, he ain't doing his work. 
So I know Bishop Steve will be doing that. He'll be smelling like the sheep. No reno huri no kia tato fare, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Kia ro mana tato. And Bishop Steve, we invite you to come forward now, be greeted by Bishop Pat, and receive the pectoral cross worn by Bishop Pompelia. Come forth. Now follows the reading of the pontifical appointment letter. Francis, bishop and servant of the servants of God, to venerable brother Stephen Marmion Law, till now bishop of Hamilton, and called to be overseer of the sacred matters in Oakland. Greetings and apostolic blessing. The true light, Jesus Christ, who illuminates every person, came into the world in order that, according to the will of God the Father, and through his saving work, might destroy the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. This divine mystery is perpetuated in the church, which, like a good mother, embraces all our children wherever they are scattered and gathers them into one mystical body. In exercising the office of Vicar of Christ, we endeavor to carefully assign suitable men to govern the church communities who are deprived of their prelate. Therefore, we now direct our attention to the community of Auckland, which lacks its shepherd after the resignation of our venerable brother, Patrick James Tidan. We consider you, venerable brother, now experienced in the Episcopal ministry, apt to be chosen for this very heavy task. 
in our apostolic authority. After consultation with the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples, we discharge you from the aforementioned office of Bishop of Hamilton and name you Bishop of Auckland with the rights and the obligations observed for this office according to canon law. You will see to it that the clergy and the diocesan community entrusted to you are well informed of this letter of ours. We kindly ex exhort them to value, love, and support with faithful cooperation their new moderator in their spiritual life. Finally, uh, venerable brother, may the Lord keep you so that you may constantly serve his people in joy and hope, and Father, that you may perform the work you undertake, supported by the example and patronage of the blessed Patrick and Joseph, husband of the blessed Virgin Mary, bearing the witness of God's mercy in your heart. Given in Rome at the Lateran on the 17th day of December in the year of our Lord 2021, the ninth year of our pontificate. Te tuku hoki a te wirihiko, te pihopa me te pononga o ngā pononga a te ariki. E manaki i tanga ki te mina te tapu ki a Stephen Marman Lowe, ko i e te pihopa o kirikiri roa tai noa ki tēnei wā, a ka, ka kua tuahua hoki ia hei kai tiro tiro o ngā kaupapa tapu ki tāmaki makaurau. Ko hehu kraiti te marama tanga Tuturu e putu ai ia tangata ki te ao marama. Ka tau mai ia ki te ao kia whati te ringa kaha o aitua. A kia whakatū anō te aranga ake. Tirohea te kupu whakataki e te krakia ukaritia tuarua. I ana mahi whakaora e hanga ana ki te hia hia o te matua tapu. Kia whakatapu hia tēnei kaupapahuna e te hāhi Pera e te whaia pai, kaua fi ana, i ana tamariki e noho mārara ana e te whenua. E whakakau ana i a rātou, ki roto e te tinana tapu tino miharo. I raro e ngā mahi a te taumata o te epekopa a te kraiti, ko tā mātou mahi e a te whakatū e ngā tangata tōtika ke te arahi e ngā hāpori o te hāhi, kaore o rātou ipikopa. Nō runga i tērā, ka anga atu mātou ki te hāpuri o tāmaki makaurau. Arā nō te hekanga o te minata tapu o Patrick James Dunn. Ko kore o rātou hepara, o tira ki o mātou whakaro e te minata tapu i runga anō i o mōhio tanga mō ngā mahi a ngā ipikopa. Ko koe te mea tika he hāpai tēnei mahi tino taumaha. I raro e ngā mana apotro o te hāhi, i runga anō 
e ngā whakawhitinga kōrero ki te huinga mō te takahuri o ngā iwi ki te whakapono. Ko whakawātia hia koe i tō tūranga o mua he pihopa o kirikiri roa, a tapaina koe he pihopa o tamaki makaura. Kia mau ia koe ngā tika me ngā kawenga o tēnei tūranga i raro te ture o te hāhi katorika. Māu anō ngā amorangi me ngā tangata o te hāpuri e whakamohio atu ki tēnei whakatau. Ke te whakahau mārire mātou i a rātou, ke te whakanoe, ke te manāki, ki te tautoko i a rātou, kai takawainga hau i runga i ngā ngākau tapatahi i roto e ngā mahi wairua. He oi anō e te mene te tapu, mā te āriki koe he tiaki ki a pūmau o mahi mā tōna iwi i runga te harikoa me te tūmanako. Wai hoki ki a tūtukui tō mahi i raro ngā manaki tanga o te tauira o pātariki rawa koho e pā. Te hoa tāne o mere takakau e mau ana anō e te ata whai o te āriki ki roto i tō ngā kau. He mea whakapuaki ki Roma ki te Lathrin e te kauma whitu o ngā rā o hakihia e te tau o tō tātou āriki 2021 a rā e te tau tua iwa o tō tātou pāpā. describes that this letter of appointment is shown for those who gather for the massive installation. Deacon Pomeray will now pass the apostolic letter to Bishop. Now, after the reading of the Pontifical Letter of Appointment. May I present the greetings and gratitude of the entire Holy See, particularly of His Eminence, Cardinal Louis Antonio Tagle, Prefect of the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples, to the bishops and all the faithful of the Diocese of Auckland and Hamilton. Your Excellency Bishop Patrick James Dunn, many thanks from the Holy See for your strenuous Episcopal ministry to the people of God in this Diocese of Auckland for 27 years. You have proved to be a tireless and vigorous shepherd of this portion of the people of God. Your solicitude for the Church and your zeal for the salvation of souls have not been confined in the territory of this diocese. They have rather extended their effects to the rest of Aotearoa and in the whole region of Oceania, particularly in the numerous dioceses in the Pacific Islands. There is no doubt that all this would not have been possible had it not been for the collaboration of many bishops, members of the clergy, the religious men and women, lay men and women at parish and diocesan levels in the Diocese of Auckland. It is for that reason that the Holy See 
is thanking all the faithful of this diocese for having collaborated with Bishop Patrick Dunn in exercising his duties. Allow me to highlight the role of the Auxiliary Bishop, His Excellency Bishop Michael Gillen, the Vicar General, the entire diocesan curia, male and female religious congregations in all the church institutions, the parish councils, all groups of the apostolate of the laity, and all the families. For all that, I ask you, Bishop Patrick Dunn, to accept the gratitude of the Holy See and to be assured of the prayers of the whole church as you begin a new life. The Holy See and the church in this region will continually to ask not only for your prayers, but also for your advice in many issues. Your Excellency Bishop Stephen Marmion Law, receive the warm thanks of the Holy See for your yes, your yes to the request of the Holy Father to leave your beloved Diocese of Hamilton. Thanks for having taken this request as a new invitation of Jesus Christ to follow him wherever he wants you to be. In this context, the Holy See is also thanking all the faithful of the Diocese of Hamilton for having perceived the will of God in this appointment and for having felt the necessity to let their beloved shepherd go. The Holy See is therefore thanking the people of the Diocese of Hamilton for your prayer and support to Bishop Stephen Law when he was with you as a bishop and in this moment when he is taking possession of the neighboring Diocese of Auckland. Bishop Steph Stephen Law, in this hour of your installation in the Diocese of Auckland, you are receiving new brothers and sisters. Love them and take care of their spiritual life. To put it in the words of St. Augustine, Bishop of Hippo in the fourth century, for them you are a bishop, but with them you are a Christian, but a Christian called to lead this church under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the support of the grace that comes from above. In the papal letter of appointment, His Holiness Pope Francis is encouraging all sons and daughters of this diocese to welcome you, to love you, and to support you with faithful collaboration. Therefore, it is the prayer of the Holy See that you be at the service of unity of this portion of the people of God and at the service of communion with the apostolic roots, with the universal church, and other particular churches, and of course, with the distinct charisms. Bishop Stephen Law, may you feel the support and the effect of the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and that of St. Patrick, the patron of this Diocese of Auckland. As we gather today to formally participate in this installation of Bishop Steve Lowe as the Bishop of Auckland, we do so take the opportunity to acknowledge Bishop Pat. The Apostolic Nuncio has already done that on behalf of the Holy See, but Pat, it is only right that we acknowledge with deep gratitude your ministry as the Bishop of Auckland ordained here in 1994 as the Auxiliary Bishop and within a year had become the Bishop of the Diocese and has faithfully and generously served this Diocese as we have heard for the last 27 years. Pat, we thank you most sincerely for your 
huge contribution to the church in New Zealand as the Bishop of Auckland and as a member of the Bishop's Conference. Today you have passed on to Bishop Steve the Pectoral Cross, the first bishop of this land, Bishop John Baptist Francis Pampalia. We acknowledge that great line of bishops that Manuel has already referred to in his mihi this morning. And we particularly thank you for your work in the last 28 years as a bishop here in Auckland. Could I invite you please to join in a applause of gratitude for all the work that Bishop Pat has done. Bishop Steve, it is with great joy that we formally acknowledge your cele and celebrate your appointment today as the 12th Bishop of Auckland. The cathedra, the bishop's chair which you now occupy, also goes back to our founding bishop, John Baptiste Francois Pompalia. Bishop Steve said to me just before we processed in, don't we have a great privilege in the role we have to serve the church. It's with that attitude in mind that your new bishop comes to you to be installed today, and we know that he will continue to realize and acknowledge that it is a great privilege to be of service. A boy from Hokitika, who now is the Bishop of Auckland. Steve, we congratulate you, we promise you our ongoing prayerful support and look forward to working with you as the Bishop of Auckland. I'm going to now invite you to pray for Bishop Steve as he is formally installed now as the Bishop of Auckland. Would you please stand as we sing together Vene Sancte Spiritus. Almighty and eternal God, from the highest heavens, <clears throat> you sent your Son among us to teach and guide us. We earnestly pray that this, your servant, Bishop Stephen Marmion Lowe, <clears throat> in whom you have given the fullness of the priesthood, may grow in humility as he assumes the chair of this office. Let him come among us as one who serves and make his heart the throne of your comforting spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. With faith in Christ Jesus, and with love in my heart, I accept the pastoral care of the people of God in this diocese of Auckland. I promise to serve faithfully the church of this diocese as shepherd, to preach the gospel 
and celebrate the Eucharist and to build up the church as the body of Christ. Steve, may God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfilment. Thank you for, for your welcome and thank you um, for coming today, <clears throat> today in these, these challenging times. We live in an age of lockdowns, social distancing and masks. And so uh, I'm aware that many are joining this Eucharist uh, by live stream. So I greet you as well as we gather this morning. The entrance hymn as uh, the people of God came uh, as the, uh, the clergy processed in, was all creatures of our God and King. It's a hymn that means a lot to me. It was the entrance hymn for my father's funeral. It was the entrance hymn for my ordination as a, uh, as a priest. And it was the entrance hymn of my mother's funeral. And at my mother's funeral, the skies opened as only it can on the west coast and uh, it was lovely. The rain was pouring as we processed into the cathedral this morning. So I loved walking in the rain. As we, uh, the rain falls on us, so God's blessings always falls on us. Um, and as we gather to celebrate his Eucharist together, we raise to him our praises. As we pray. Amen. Kia to Tarangi Marie Kia Koto, peace be with you. And let's raise our, our praise to God as we sing the Gloria. Atua, O God, and the covenant of your Christ. You never cease to gather to yourself from all nations, a people growing together in unity through the Spirit. Grant, we pray, that your church, faithful to the mission entrusted to her, may continually go forward with the human family 
and always be the leaven and the soul of human society to renew it in Christ Jesus and transform it into the family of God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Pentecost Day came around, they had all met in one room. When suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven, the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were sitting. And something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. And at this sound they assembled, each one but bewildered, to hear these men speaking in his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, all these men speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and proselytes like Cretans and Arabs, we hear them preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Just as a human body, though it is made up of many parts, is a single unit because all these parts, though many, make one body, so it is with Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized, Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens, and one spirit was given to us all to drink. Nor is the body to be identified with any one of its many parts. If the foot were to say, I am not a hand and so I do not belong to the body, would that mean that it stopped being a part of the body? If the ear were to say, I am not an eye and so I do not belong to the body, would that mean that it was not a part of the body? If your whole body was just one eye, how would you hear anything? If it was just one ear, how would you smell anything? Instead of that, God put all the separate parts into the body on purpose. If all the parts were the same, how could it be a body? As it is, the parts are many, but the body is one. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. Nor can the head say to the feet, I do not need you. What is more, it is precisely the parts of the body that seem to be the weakest, which are the indispensable ones. And it is the least honorable parts of the body that we clothe with the greatest care. So our more improper parts get decorated in a way that our more proper parts do not need. God has arranged the body so that more dignity is given to the parts which are without, and that there may not be disagreements inside the body, but that each part be equally concerned for all the others. If one part is hurt, all parts are hurt with it. If one part is given special honor, all parts enjoy it. Now you, together, are Christ's body, but each of you is a different part. In the church, God has given the first place to the apostles, the second to the prophets, the third to teachers. After them, miracles, and after them, the gift of healing. Helpers, good leaders, those with many languages. Are all of them apostles, or all of them prophets, or all of them teachers? Do they all have gift of miracles or the gift of healing? Do all speak strange languages 
and all interpret them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Jesus showed himself to his disciples, and after they had eaten, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Look after my sheep. Then he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter, was upset that he asked him the third time, do you love me? And said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I tell you most solemnly, when you were young, you put on your own belt and walked where you liked. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will put a belt round you and take you where you would rather not go. In these words, 
he indicated the kind of death by which Peter would give glory to God. After this, he said, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, he must be our first word, for he is the word. Christ calls us, Christ empowers us, and Christ sends us. And that's been the story of, of your life, Bishop Pat. You have been a tireless worker of the Lord who called you to priesthood and called you to be the Bishop of Auckland and, how, and who now calls you to new possibilities as a Bishop. The Diocese of Auckland has seen how the Lord empowered you. And the seeds that you have sown in your 27 years as Bishop of Auckland. And the new seeds you will undoubtedly sow bear a rich harvest for the coming of the kingdom. And now Auckland Diocese, for better or for worse, you have a new bishop. Can I take this moment to thank uh, the people of the Diocese of Hamilton. Seven years ago I walked into your cathedral, the Cathedral of the Blessed Virgin Mary, as a priest and walked out as a bishop. And for the last seven years you have shaped me to become the bishop that I am. It has been an awesome privilege to be your bishop. I've loved being your bishop. And I've loved you, the people of the Diocese of Hamilton. And it's with much sadness that I, that I leave Hamilton. But I know that this is where the Lord has called me. Where he asks me to, to serve him and his people. To you all, can I, can I tell you a little secret about bishops? We have limitations. We have our blindnesses, our shortcomings, and our sins. We're often overwhelmed before the office the Lord calls us to and by the challenges we have to face every day and the decisions we have to make. We're not perfect, and not everything that we say or do is going to suit everyone. And in her wisdom, the church reminds us, bishops of this, and you, the people of God, this, where in every Mass we pray for Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant. It's a reminder that the office of bishop must be grounded in humility and that our exercising of the office of bishop is going to be shaped by our relationship with our God and you, the holy people of God. Please remember this truth of unworthy servant about me 
and about my brother bishops too. For we live in an age of perfectionism, that the other person must be perfect in all respects from my perspective. But if we fail to meet that level of perfectionism, when we fail to meet others' expectations, our age tends to crucify the other. And this is very dangerous spiritually. For if we focus on the fault or the error of others, we'll always find it. And we'll end up destroying our relationship with that other person. And indeed, we'll end up destroying that person themselves. And we find that our minds, and we're still our hearts can become closed and bitter. There are so many examples of this in our world today. And maybe, if we're honest, we can recognise that tendency within ourselves as well. But for us, our example is Christ, the one who calls us, the one who empowers us, and the one who sends us for he is the one who works with imperfections. I've discovered this in my life. I've discovered how the Lord is patient with me, how he shapes me and changes me as he calls me beyond myself to be more the person he calls me to be. I'm a work in progress. I'm on the journey as we all are. I hope the Lord will grace you to be patient with me and give you the right words to challenge and critique me so that I don't become enclosed in myself, but rather I come become the person God calls me to be. I love the way Jesus deals with imperfections and we get the classic example in today's gospel, don't we, with Peter. You know, Peter who had denied Jesus three times. There was no wagging the finger or pointing the finger or accusations. Rather, it was a call. Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And then that sending out. Feed my lambs. Look after my sheep. Feed my sheep. The image of the shepherd and the sheep in the Gospels is not the green paddocks of New Zealand farmland. It's the image of the wilderness, the desert, the place where wild animals attack the flock and there is little pasture or water. That's where the shepherd lives his life with his sheep, in difficult places. And that's what Pope Francis reminds us that is the place of the church, the peripheries. We're called out of the comfort of our bishops' palaces, of our presbyteries, our comfortable parishes, and our everyday normal way of doing things. And we're called to go out to uncomfortable places. Like Peter, we are called to stretch out our hands so that somebody else may put a belt round us and take us where we would rather not go. For we follow him, we follow him who says, This is my body, which will be given up for you. We are called by him to be his one body of Christ, to be the living embodiment of him and died who died and rose again because that should be the pattern of our lives to die to self and rise again to new life in Christ more and more each day so that in Christ he might transform the world that's the same call we we heard in the reading from the acts of the apostles on that pentecost day the call from the closed room 
And we saw a church, a new church, being given birth that was diverse in its language and cultures. Isn't that a reflection of this diocese of Auckland? We're called to be together the spirit-filled diocese of Auckland, where each of us, the whole people of God, are actively speaking about the marvels of God, the way his spirit is working in us. It's that same spirit that animates the body of Christ that St. Paul speaks of in his letter to the Corinthians. A body that is called to unity. A body that at times is wounded and hurting. St. Paul writes, if one part hurt is hurt, all parts are hurt with it. And I want to acknowledge with deep shame those who have suffered abuse from members of the church, particularly from clergy or religious, for those people who've experienced that and live with the ongoing trauma of that abuse. Abuse in any form is not of God. It has no place in the church. It has no place in our world. If there is to be any hope of healing, the church must confront its past with guilt and shame and be committed to work with survivors to facilitate justice, healing, and please God, peace. We must be committed to creating a safe church. And we must be committed from our place of shame and guilt to speak out for those who are being abused in our society today. St. Paul also talks in his theology of the body of Christ on division. He writes, The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. Nor can the head say to the feet, I do not need you. Clearly Paul was writing about this because there were divisions within the community at Corinth. Divisions that needed to be corrected. Perhaps each of us can look into our hearts and ask, have I been infected with the virus of division and becoming a divider? Have I an exalted view of the righteousness of my opinions so that I dismiss, dismiss the views and opinions of others, whether it's the Pope, the Bishop, the parish priest, or the people we're called to serve. This is just not a church issue. It's everywhere in our world at the moment. But Christ prays that we be one. And that must always be our work. But in this moment of time, this providential moment of time, of challenge and difficulties, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, invites us to become a synodal church. A church that listens to each other and that reflects together as the whole people of God. A church that as it listens and reflects to with each other, senses the guidance of the Holy Spirit who takes us to new places and to new, challenge, uh, to new solutions as we face the challenges of our time. As, I, as your new bishop, I ask you to be a synodal church. I need and want to listen to you so that you may assist me in being the shepherd of the diocese that I am called to be. 
I look forward. Dennis ordained me as the Bishop of, of Hamilton and took me to the, the cathedra. He said, 23 years to go. So that was seven years ago. So you've got me for 16 years unless the Lord wills something else. In these years ahead together, please pray for me as I will pray for you. And I end where we began, Christ. He must not only be our first word, he must be our last word as the Diocese of Auckland. For Christ calls us all. Christ empowers us all. And Christ sends us out to be the one body of Christ. God, our loving Father, you are the, the God who listens to the cries of the poor. Listen to the prayers that rise up from our hearts on this day. For Bishop Steve Sfano and friends who have nurtured him in faith, that they may be given the strength and charity to continue to accompany and support him. <laughs> Bishop Pat in his new phase of ministry, that he may experience peace and joy, knowing the gratitude of all for his years of joyful, loving service. diocesan face of the Senate on synodality, and it may be a rich expression of our journey together as a listening and inclusive church. survivors of abuse by members of the church, that the current Royal Commission and church responses may bring healing and justice to them. making decisions concerning the COVID-19 pandemic, that they may be granted wisdom and good counsel to serve our communities compassionately and equitably. away from church because of COVID or fear, that they may know our love and prayers, and for the personal intentions we hold in our silence.
Let's pray also for our beloved dead. Those who have nurtured us on the journey of life, that you may hold them close to your heart. O oh God, who loves us and knows us, we know that you hear the needs of the community gathered before you and ask that you graciously grant the petitions that we have raised before you, both spoken and unspoken, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Eteriki, O Lord, receive with kindness the offerings we bring you, and the grant that your church, which came forth from the side of Christ as he slept on the cross, may ever draw her holiness from participation in this mystery, living by it always and responding worthily to her founder, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. It is truly right and just. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his pastoral mystery, he accomplished a marvellous thing, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy and loving sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Patrick, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, Bishop Michael, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of Savior's command and form by his divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into do temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. But not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Eteriki, O Lord, nourished by the sacrament of your Son, we implore you to make fruitful the work of your church. For by it you constantly reveal the fullness of the mystery of salvation to the poor that you have called to an honoured place in your eternal kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bishop Steve on, on your behalf, I acknowledge the diocesan and cathedral personnel who have been involved over the last two days in your welcome. Uh, it is a great joy to celebrate today. Uh, it is right that we acknowledge the many people who will be participating in this um, at home. Uh, but again, uh, we uh, welcome you with great joy. <clears throat> Following Mass, there is hospitality uh, in the square, so please uh, do stay and continue to celebrate. And don't hesitate to repeat your name to our new bishop over the next few months as he gets to know us. Bishop Steve, there is a really important occasion we'd also like to acknowledge today. Bobby and Gemma Newson, if you would come forward, please. Hari mai. Come along. For decades, these two have served the church. Bobby is from uh, the Hokianga, so we acknowledge the cradle of Catholicism that uh, gave birth to him. But these two, slow walking, were married 50 years ago at Yangawaka by Pa Henare. Invite Bishop Pat to come forward. Come up the stairs. Can you make it? <laughs> Bobby Rava Kojema, Kewahi Mihi Aroha, He Mihi Fokafeta, Kia Kodua, Itene Ra Huri To, Moto Kodua Marena, Rimateko Nato Kua Pahure Ake Ne. Uh, tēnā e wahi mihi e, e whakawhete ana a hau i a kōrua mō tō kōrua mahi rangatira ke wanganui a mātou te whānau o te hāhi. Bob and Gemma, I think on behalf of all who know you, I, I would like to thank you. I've known you for most of that 50 years and you've always been um, loving and supportive and generous in your service of everyone and the church. And Bob, I'd just like to congratulate you on choosing such a beautiful bride. <laughs> and Jimmy, you did quite well too. <laughs> Congratulations. And I think... Congratulations. Congratulations. I'll give you these to you, Bobby, but they're not for you, so take the hint. Hand them over. <laughs> Bob, I'm told it's also your birthday today. Yeah. Or oh, tomorrow. Get the first to the It's a surprise. Uh, we only come to Mass today and I've got a lot of work to do for my birthday tomorrow, but didn't expect it. But it is our wedding anniversary today at Te Umawaka, uh, 50 years ago with Pa Henry. So um, it's a privilege to be here today to welcome you, Bishop Steve, and um, also to honour Bishop Pat and all the bishops uh, especially you, Bishop Pat. You've been our leader, you've been our shepherd. And to all, uh, thank you for a beautiful ceremony today. 
uh, Gemma and I will celebrate the wedding anniversary and to all those loving couples here and to fathers and sisters. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Kia ora. Kia ora. of going on, but the Diocese of Hamilton will tell me that that's my tendency anyway. Uh, could I just take this opportunity to, to um, once again to, to thank you for, for coming to this Mass today. Um, Archbishop Novartis, thank you for, for being here, and, and you being here, uh, Pope Francis is here, and um, so thank you for, for being here and representing the Holy Father. Um, thank you for your work for the mission of the Church, and can I please ask you to um, work hard to find a great bishop for Hamilton. <laughs> I think Palmerston North and Christchurch are looking for one too. So. Um, Cardinal John, um, thank you for, for being here as well. Cardinal John was my formator in the seminary, so if you've got any concerns about me, um, talk to him today. Uh, I've already acknowledged you, Bishop Pat. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge Bishop Paul Martin from Christchurch, my home diocese. Uh, thank you for coming, Paul. Um, Bishop Dennis, uh, you were the principal celebrant at my ordination um, in Hamilton as, as your successor, and it was um, a huge privilege to step into your um, uh, to step into your shoes as I now try to step into Bishop Den uh, Bishop Pat's shoes, and uh, Mich Bishop Michael. Um, when I started in Hamilton, you were my priest, and now, now we're working together in the Lord's Vineyard in the Diocese of Auckland, and I look forward to that. Uh, Bishop Ross and Dean Anne, thank you for, for being here today, and um, I'm looking forward to your cathedral, and I'm looking forward to you coming back to our cathedral as we continue to work together on, on the, the journey of unity. To, to um, my brother priest from the Diocese of Hamilton, and to my new brother priests uh, of the Diocese of Auckland um, and, and uh, deacons, um, I'm really looking forward to, to journeying with you. As I said to Cardinal John before the Mass, this, this ministry that we share is an awesome privilege, you know, to be servants of the Lord Jesus in and amongst his holy people. And so I look forward to journeying with you and hope that you will... Um, enjoy journeying with me and that together um, that we can be the great prosperity of the Diocese of Auckland. Um, to the people of, of Auckland who are gathered today, um, both here and through live stream, um, greetings to you all again. Thank you for being here. I look forward to getting to know you over the next uh, little while. As Monsignor Bernard said, uh, please keep telling me your names because I will forget. Um, but it is nice that, um, that there's, there's some people that I know here from the Diocese of Auckland um, and um, that, are, that are here today and I look forward to meeting many more. Particularly to you young people, can I greet you at our colleges? Um, one of the things I love doing each year um, and is to visit colleges and celebrate Eucharist with us um, because you're not only the future of the church, you are the church today. And it's really important that you raise your voice so that we can hear your views as we continue our synodal journey as the Holy Father asks of us. Um, I finally want to acknowledge um, my family and, um, and the people of the West Coast who sent their greetings this morning. Um, there's a saying that you can take the West Coasters out of the, the West Coast, but you can't take the coast out of the coasters and I will be forever um, a West Coaster and um, a country boy from Hokotika. Um, but the Lord chooses the most unusual of people, so here I am, and I look forward to journeying with you um, 
as we together journey with the Lord in this great journey of life, as we live his life of faith, hope and love. Kia Stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.